Hello and welcome to this three-part series on denoising sensor data in Touch Designer. Originally I had intended this to be only one video, but it ran about 40 minutes long. So instead of making you suffer through that, um, I decided to break it up into three different videos, um, each dealing with a different aspect of you know how we can denoise uh, some sensor data. And, and during the video, what you'll see is I, I make this, um, this slider here, this noisy slider that I use to simulate some, uh, some sensor, uh, whether that be an Arduino accelerometer or distance sensor, or maybe a connect, um, you know, uh, hand, or it, it could be, it could be literally anything that, that provides you with a continuous stream of data that can get a little, uh, jittery. And um, the point of the videos are to find ways to take this jittery data and see if we can tell when uh, this sensor uh, enters in a certain area, a certain triggerable area, and when it leaves. And what you'll find is, you know, there's there's certain methods here that are more, that are pretty noisy. There are certain methods that do really well on edge cases. And then there are certain methods that uh, overall give you a lot of control over, uh, over how to interpret your data and, and ways that you can do that. Um, so I hope you enjoy. Uh, if you have any comments, uh, leave them below or message me directly. All right, thanks guys, enjoy. Okay, let's start here by making this noisy slider. Um, we will add this slider in and then Look, uh, look at the inside of it to see what's going on. Uh, we have this panel, uh, which is giving us the actual slider data, and then it's going to an out, and then we have this knob. So we'll start by adding a uh, noise chop in here, turning on the time slice, and then lowering the period, and lowering the amplitude. And we'll make this uh, 0.05. Then the next thing we're gonna do is add in a math, and then we'll add the noise into the actual panel data. And then output that. And that's that's gonna be the, um, the, the noisy output to our slider. Uh, next thing is we need this knob to reflect that, uh, that noise, so we're just going to assign it as a chop reference here at the left anchor. Then we're gonna add our uh, bounds here, uh, which is gonna be this rectangle where we do a parent.par.width, and then we'll do a parent.par.height, and then we'll make the size of the rectangle 0.1, and then give it the red color. So next thing is we're gonna add this null here um, and just make that the background of our slider. And we do that by going up to the slider, uh, going into the look component and then going uh, null BG. Cool. And then the last thing is we want to see the real data of this slider uh, coming out. So we're gonna grab an out and then attach it here. Cool. So I think that's it for the slider. This is gonna simulate uh, some noisy data for us. Uh, you can use an accelerometer or a distance sensor if you have one of those uh, to do the same uh, if it's a little noisy. But uh, I found that this is, this is a, a pretty good simulation for like those Arduino distance sensors or the Arduino um, uh, accelerometers. Uh, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna look and we're, we're gonna set up the, the bounds for uh, where uh, this knob enters this red rectangle. And we wanna know, uh, we wanna basically flip to a zero or a one, a zero if we're outside of that bounds and a one if we're inside of that bounds. And one way that you might know how to do this is with a logic. So first things first though, I'm gonna pull out a null, which is just gonna let us look at that data. And I'm gonna attach that to a logic and then this logic, we're gonna take the convert input parameter and set it to off when outside bounds. 
Then we're going to add the bounds, and the, this rectangle should have the bounds. The left bound should be at 0.45, and the right bound should be at 0.55. So now when this knob is outside, we're getting a zero, and when this knob is inside, we're getting a one. Uh, and what's, what's interesting here is when we start looking at the edge cases, right? So when the slider is closer to the edge, that noisy data gets forwarded all the way to our trigger, which is what we don't want. So what we, what we wanna know is like how wrong is this trigger currently? And one way we can look at this, and Unfortunately, you can't do this with a real sensor, but we can do this in our imaginary idealized land of thinking about algorithms, smoothing algorithms. We can take the real sensor data here and we can look at it uh, um, you know, in the same logical comparison for the bounds. So right now we should be inside of our triggerable bounds. However, this noise uh, sometimes, you know, triggers the, hey, we've gone outside. So uh, the, the whole point of this tutorial is trying to find ways of, of smoothing this out so we have more consistent data of whether we're inside or outside of the bounds. Um, and that, that's what we're gonna do here. So the first way that you might do this is you might add a lag chop. And what a lag chop does is basically smooths out uh, a continuous number series. Uh, this, this has some really great effect with animations, giving you, um, you know, acceleration, deceleration, or like really smooth linear interpretation, uh, interpolations. Um, the, uh, uh, but what it can also do is with this input data, uh, give you some, some cleaner input data to work with with this logic. So, we're gonna take this, uh, this lag and uh, attach it to this logical bound again and see how much better it is over the just raw, uh, raw data going straight to the logic, right? So, you know, when we're outside, you know, the smooth value tends to uh, give us some more consistent data and when we're inside, it tends to be more consistent as well. However, the lag suffers uh, when you're at the exact edge of that bound, right? It starts to get just as noisy. So how can, uh, how can we mitigate that? What, what are some ways that we can mitigate that, that noise? Um, and we'll, we'll get into that in, in a second. But, but first, what I'd like to show you is one more way that you might read this data and interpret it. And that's by using a trail chop. So the trail chop basically records a sensor data over this window of time. Um, and what this allows you to do is then put down an analyze chop and then average over that entire window of time. And this is pretty similar to what lag does, only it gives you a, a more um, intuitive way of thinking about where this window is. And it also gives you some uh, controls over you know, oh, we want to take the average or we want to find, you know, the sum or uh, minimum maximums. Uh, and it gives you uh, access to some more, uh, some richer uh, interaction data that you might not get with the lag. And you can get pretty similar results if you just make this window length um, the exact same as your lag length. So if we were to take this lag length and make it 0.4, you'll see uh, some pretty similar uh, smoothing results between you know, this lag and this analyze, and we can see that even clearer if we use this logic um, up here. So these will give about the same results um, with the same, the same types of consistencies. It's just that the trail gives you uh, access to some deeper data within, within your, um, your, your uh, your sensor data, or some deeper analysis within your sensor data. So what we're gonna do here uh, is just kind of clean this up a little bit, rename it, and uh, then analyze, you know, how can we start to look at which one of these algorithms is best, and how can we improve upon them? So uh, to do that, I'm just gonna uh, quickly rename these. We'll name this first one, um, moving 
average. We'll name this next one lagged. We'll name this one raw. And finally, we'll name this one, which, you know, if you're actually using a sensor, you won't have access to, which is real. Uh, and this is, you know, where we expect the slider knob to be despite the noise. And as you can see, these things, you know, just by looking at them, you can kind of see their performance, right? Um, the lagged and the moving average tend to have a slower response rate than the raw, right? But then the raw is definitely more noisy at the edge cases, so it's not as consistent. Um, I mean, these the the uh, moving average and the lagged are still you know not very consistent um, comparatively. Like they, you can see that they're dropping out a little bit, but they're much better than the raw. And we can actually look at this um, you know mathematically to see the percentage of error we're getting. And in order to do that, we're going to merge all of these renames, well, these three renames at least, into one merge. Then we're going to add a math afterwards. Then we're going to uh, take this real component here and put it as the, the uh, lower component in our math. And then we're going to subtract, right? And this is going to give us the difference between what these things are, these smoothing algorithms are reading versus what should be actually the case. And that's, that's error. And we don't want negative error. We, we only want positive error. So this channel post op, we're going to give a positive. So it only reads out positive error values. And then, um, you know, what we're going to do in order to kind of see, you know, an accumulated error is we're going to add a trail. And then we're going to analyze that trail. So this window on the trail is for four seconds. So this is the error accumulated over four seconds of these, uh, these different smoothing algorithms. And you can see that the raw is like 30% erroneous, right? Like this thing is wrong 30% of the time. Well, the moving average and the lag tend to be around, you know, 10 to 15%. You know, the lag just got up to about 20% there. But um, generally, those, those are going to be better than just the raw signal for you. Um, and, you know, in, in the next video, what we'll, what we'll do is look at how to get these numbers down, right? Because these have, uh, they're still maybe too erroneous for what you're trying to do. They're going to flip around your animations or, or cause some, some behavior that you're not expecting. And in the next video, we'll, we'll find a way to make make these algorithms more certain of themselves, right? Give them this, this metric of like how, how sure you are that you're not producing an error, right? And uh, that, that'll, that'll give us some better results here uh, towards the end. Um, anyway, so uh, we'll see you in the next video.